Hey Turtle Nerds, welcome back to another video. In today's video, we have to clean out little pumpkin's enclosure here and top off the water. We need to feed the little juvenile terrapins down here. We need to go make sure that everyone's doing well outside, especially Jelly and Otis after I set them up yesterday. And I don't know, maybe we'll go in the woods looking for some critters. It rained a lot last night and I found a ton of frogs and toads, which was incredible because I love them. But before we get started with all of that, make sure that you guys hit the subscribe button in the bottom right hand corner. I'm wearing a new shirt today and if you want to wear a new shirt, hit the link right up over here. Head over to my Teespring where I have some fun designs that have turtles on them. You let everyone know that you're a turtle nerd. You support me and the channel. Help me support my kids. I'm a single father trying to raise several children. It's very difficult, especially in this economy and political climate. If you want to go the step further to support me, hit the link up over here. Head over to my Patreon. I get behind the scenes access, videos a day early, photos of things, answer any and all your questions, phone calls, whatever it may be, and I will love you forever. So with all that fun stuff out of the way let's i don't know let's feed the baby turtles first the little little hatchling uh, spotted turtles yeah Okay, now I'm gonna run to Walmart because uh, I kind of want some plants, see some supplies. I don't know, just see what they got. I just walked in here and I caught the little spotted turtle moving across the tub. Look at him, look at him, look at him. Oh, there he goes, there he goes, there he goes. He just hauled butt into the water. So that's what they would do. They would come on land, go moving somewhere else looking for food. There was a food pellet that they didn't get to that was over here that is now gone. So they'll get up, go grab some food, and then go and then rush back and hide in their little moss setup. Let's get these shoes on. We're getting a late start to the day. Hi, Louie. Hi, puppy. What are you doing, mister? What are you doing, old man? Hi. Hi, baby. You're all gray. Look at you, old man. Let's go plant a fern. What are you doing? Okay, so let's check on these guys and see how they're settling in. So let's see, where are they? Jelly should be in here. Otis, I don't know where he's gonna be. Otis was under the basking dock earlier, which I found very interesting. Oh, someone's right here. There's a little Jelly. Hi, buddy. So let's see where Otis is at. Is he under this still? Nope. He was under this earlier. I just hope that he was able to figure out how to, you know, climb the ramp and get out. That he's not like drowned somewhere in here. Maybe under this hide? No. Maybe in this sphagnum moss? Uh, uh, nope. Is he in here? Yep. He's in the sphagnum moss. Check that out. That's really cool. So that's why I put this sphagnum moss here for him to like bury himself. So earlier he was in the water, literally underneath here and hanging out right here in the plants. So that means that he's able to use the ramp. He knows how to get out, which is like super duper good. Just so that way he's not like stuck in here. Now I have this gigantic fern, which is awesome that I want to put right there, right schmack right there. So I'm going to go do the classic, get rid of all the extra dirt in the roots, clear out this little area and get it planted. Y'all. This plant freaking rocks. Look at the size of this thing and all those roots and whatnot. This is fantastic. This is like, I don't know, it's just perfect. It reminds me of like Jurassic Park or something. I just like ferns. I don't know, I'm a weirdo. All right, let's get this thing planted. Okay, my camera is really sketchily set up and if it falls, it is very expensive. So I'm gonna be super careful here. Like as careful as I possibly can be. Dig all this out. Shovels are for nerds, so I'm not using one. gonna kind of angle it too. Oh, there we go. That's beautiful. Now let's backfill the whole thing. Check this thing out. That's absolutely perfect. And I sort of angled it away so that way it's not straight up back here. That way it's making like a little bit of an overhang. And here comes Mr. Jelly to come and check things out and look for food. I'm probably gonna throw these guys a little bit more food today, but and maybe get a little bit more aquatic plants and vegetation up here. Oh, but this should all grow in really, really beautifully now. As we check on everyone in the pond, it stormed really hard last night. I don't think I'm gonna feed them today. I fed them a good amount yesterday, but I want you guys to take a look at one critter in particular. I like to do health checkups on everyone, make sure that we're all looking good. Dragon fruit looks good. I wanna make sure like these little juvies are looking good, especially being in with all these big bad adults. Little mochi here, looking really good. Little crouton here, 
Looking also really good. Remember his chin was a little screwed up. That's healed up pretty much entirely. Gonna check on uh, Mr. Beef here. He's beefy as usual. And here comes the problem child, the spotless ornate. Unfortunately, he has a little spot on his head, which I think can either be just a little spot of fungus or it's uh, an injury from another male, it could be. I'm not too sure, but I'm just gonna keep an eye on it because, you know, you can see it right there, that little orange spot. I'm gonna keep my eye on it. If it gets any worse, I'll pull him out. It's not really anywhere else, so I'm not too sure what it could be. I suspect it's from a male um, biting, maybe mistaking this fella for a female. But we're gonna keep our eye on that. Hopefully it heals up just fine, which it should. No need to take any action if I don't have to because it'll just stress them out more than it would help them. So just doing things like that, keeping an eye out on them, making sure that everything's looking okay. These are the things I do in the pond. The girls are all looking good. The girls are all acting normal. And that's it, just making sure everyone looks okay and you know, we don't have to feed them every day. Very, very low maintenance, save for the fact that it's leaking somewhere but listen other than that that thing would be a dream to take care of once i figure out where that leak is we're gonna be in business this thing i just i can't stop looking at because everyone does that when they set up a new enclosure and this kind of rocks i would probably make this same exact enclosure except with a way more shallow water tub for my beretti in the future like literally probably the same exact thing all right children it is time to figure out what is going on. All right, pumpkin. This filter might need cleaning, does it? Yeah, I should clean it. Hello there, little spotted baby. We will get to you in a moment. Yeah, okay, so for now, we're just gonna, we're gonna grab this here and just bam. That's gonna churn up all of the water, so that way I can replace most of it, and that way little pumpkin can have a nice, happy, clean enclosure. Okay. Let's get to cleaning. We could probably do this one-handed, which is kind of epic. Oh, Dan, aren't you killing all the bacteria from the, the, the rinsing this under tap water? I don't know, probably. But there's plenty of bacteria on the fake plants, the driftwood, the whatever. And also, turtles actually don't care about the nitrogen cycle. It's important to have your tank cycled for the turtles, so that way the ammonia and nasty stuff doesn't build up in the water for like more sensitive species. All that does is keep the water quality good, which is yes, very important, but it does not matter to turtles as much as it does to like fish. So turtles, that's why you put in dechlorinator, you wait, and some people are like, well, how long do I need to let the tank cycle for? You technically don't have to let it cycle. And usually if I have enough bacteria or like decorations and stuff, there's enough bacteria in there to the point where it doesn't really matter. Yeah, that's just my thought. Anyway, this is just about clean. Let's get back inside. Make sure we don't drip this time in like this. Good as new. Now we're just gonna change some of the water, I guess. We're gonna go back to ye old process of using my hose and having to siphon it out. Let's see if we can just unravel this a little bit. Did I suck up a fish? Are you kidding me? Yep, I somehow sucked up a fish. All right, little fish, this is what happens. Here, there you go. Okay, all right, all done. Let's get this thing filled. With that task completed, this is nice and clean now for little pumpkin. Next order of business is to fill up this and get these little jubies fed because they are gonna be hungry. Yeah, I'm trying to I'm trying to fill this cup up. Please scooch. No, get all right. You wanna come with? <laughs> you weirdo. Alright, everyone is really like losing their minds, so let's get these guys in here nice and quick. Another freaking fish, and I just caught by hand. That is going back in. Stop coming in the feeding enclosure. And now we leave them to eat for an exorbitant amount of time. You see, folks, when you put them in the separate feeding tub and they eat their foodstuffs, odds are, as we put them back, it shall be revealed that they will be displacing what they've consumed. You did not just poop on my hand. Dude, uh, disrespectful. Well, as I was saying, yeah, they will usually poop in the separate enclosure that you feed them in, which is kind of awesome because then it's not as dirty uh, in the main setup. This guy still needs to eat though. See, like right there, that is a poop. 
and I can tell the difference. Please don't eat it. Please don't eat it. 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 It's totally normal and common for turtles to do that. It's like, yeah, it's gross, but like, I don't know. They just kind of do it because they're weird. I can just dump it out. Now it's not going to pollute the water in here. Let's take some of this as well. And pumpkin time. Everybody loves pumpkin time. Oh, did you? Oh, dang, pumpkin chill. I don't know what that was. That was some Jaws type of stuff. Y'all ever see on Shark Week when the Great Whites come from like 30 meters below and they just, they just like come up from, from underneath the ocean? He just did that with pellets. Dang, pumpkin. Whoa! He is a hungry little booger. Okay, so I'm sitting here feeding the spotted turtle some extra off camera. Check this out. If I wiggle my finger, he just came crawling up out of the water before. Look, 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 look. Look at this. I've had these guys less than a week and they're already this interested in food. Look at this little guy. Come on, booger. This way. Maybe it's because my finger smells like shrimp. I don't know. There is food over here, so he's not going to get faked out. Look at him. Oh my god. Oh, come here, come here, come here. Oh, he is just the cutest. Sometimes I also like to take the leftover food and watch all the fish eat it. So check this out. We break it up in the water there. First off, the turtles go for it. And then the fish all go crazy. Do you see them all down there? There's like a hundred thousand guppies. Hi, little guppies. Look at them all. Look at them all. Little piranhas. And now the closing process of feeding time. <laughs> Throw the cap on our food. Uh, you guys wait here. I'm gonna go dump out all the garbage leftover food. The last thing left to do is sanitize all of my surfaces. So that was just the bottom of the bucket. And we're just gonna turn into a housemaid for the day. Really make sure to wipe everything. And all of our little surfaces here. Ka-chow. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see y'all tomorrow.